Now, today I wanted to talk about something which really uh, is not news, so this is not really a news programme, but this is a bit of a deep dive into the powers that are retained by Westminster and the ones which we are allowed under the Scotland Act of 1998 to retain. Now most of you will be aware that we have a parliament in Edinburgh which runs most of the internal affairs of Scotland including education, health, policing, um, food, farming, agriculture, fisheries, so on. So there are a lot of powers here for the people of Scotland to sustain themselves and the nation itself functions fairly well with the powers it has. But what's missing from this list of powers are known as the reserved powers, the ones which are claimed by Westminster. Now, interesting among all of these um, are the more detailed uh, or more detailed look at the powers which London retains. Now, obviously, one of the key ones is the Constitution. Now, <coughs> let's be clear here. England does not have the Constitution. It has an unwritten set of um, parliamentary conventions, things that they do on a regular basis which have become custom and practice over many hundreds of years, but it's not a written constitution and because it's not written it has no power to restrict the powers of the Parliament in Westminster and it cannot restrict the powers of the Prime Minister, which means that the English state effectively can alter the rules of its own supposed democracy uh, anytime they like, and they constantly do. So the, the rules are constantly changing to suit whichever government is in power. On the other hand, when it comes to the constitution in Scotland, we have the written constitution and we are one of only two nations on these islands which actually have written constitutions. Notably, the Republic of Ireland has a written constitution and so does Scotland. And a written constitution basically um, circumscribes or puts a, a border around the powers of its parliament, its, the powers of its parliamentarians and its elected representatives. And that tells us basically who is in charge of the country, who is sovereign, in other words, who is at the top of the tier of command and who is responsible to them. And in the case of Scotland, it's the people who are the sovereign. And in this case, we actually lend that sovereignty to our own elected officials in our parliament in Holyrood. And the problem, of course, is that the Holyrood Parliament is a devolved parliament which acts on behalf of the United Kingdom. So it's not really a parliament at all. It's actually something which belongs to, largely, the United Kingdom. Now, the other powers that the United Kingdom controls, interestingly, and one of the most worrying, I think, is the banking and financial sector is entirely controlled by London. Westminster decides how our banking system operates and controls it and regulates it. We have no power over our own banks. If we were independent and we had our own central bank, which was there as the lender of last resort and would guarantee our currency, that would change. Now, the other thing which most people are aware of is the fact that the energy system of Scotland is also controlled by London, and it's part of what you might call not a national grid, but an international grid which covers three, four countries, if you include Northern Ireland as a country. So the four basic parts of the United Kingdom are all supplied their electricity by one central uh, network, and that network is also controlled by Westminster and largely obeys the regulations of Westminster of Ofgem. So we can't control our energy either. But what's most interesting of all is that the Act of Union, or the Union as it's known in, in Westminster, is also one of those reserved powers. It doesn't specify exactly what the Union is. But we know what the Union is because our history tells us that. The Union is a treaty. It's a treaty between the country of Scotland and the country of England. But it's not a geographical or territorial Union. That means England does not own Scotland, nor does it have the right to exploit any of our resources. So what has happened to Scotland over the last, say, 50 or 60 years is that the energy in terms of fossil fuels which was discovered in the North Sea in the geographical sector belonging to Scotland has effectively been annexed and controlled by London, despite the fact that this is not written into the Union Treaty or the Acts. It's nothing at all to do with the Union. The worrying thing, I think, also is that the, um, the British state also has powers, direct powers, over 
the media and specifically telecommunications. That means all of the internet, all TV and all radio and any other form of radio transmission anywhere in Scotland is directly controlled by London. We have no way of producing independent um, news or we have no way of broadcasting any form of independent uh, news or analysis to our own people. We have to listen to the heavily filtered, censored uh, and omitted news transmitted by the British uh, state-owned media, or the propaganda uh, outlet, as I like to refer to it, of the BBC and ITV. So we are in a situation where Scotland is wanting to hold a referendum um, seeking the opinion of its own people about the future of the Union. Now, the Union itself is protected by the reserve powers. But what does that mean? Does that mean we can't do anything about the Union? Does it mean we have no right to ask a question about the Union? And does the Constitution of England hold up to any kind of scrutiny when we have our own Constitution? Which Constitution exactly is it that the British government claims to have the control over? Because the Scottish Constitution is written, it's in law, it's still in force, and it has nothing at all to do with the Treaty of Union, and it was a precondition of the Union that those, de those documents, that legislation, which gave sovereignty to the people of Scotland would remain in perpetuity, in all time coming, I think was the phrase that was used. So here's the thing. We know in Scotland already that our Parliament has legislation in place. There is a Referendums Act which allows the Scottish Parliament and Scottish Government, I suppose, um, to hold referendums on any subject at all where we can ask our population any important question about any important national issue. The British government says that we can't ask ourselves a question about whether the Union should continue or not. However, that is not a power over the Union. Having the power to ask yourself a question does not alter the Union in any way. It simply seeks the opinion of the population. And that is the strategy that the SNP is following. Their route to it by asking the Supreme Court to rule on it right now is an interesting one. It's perhaps not the way I would have chosen to do it. I would have favoured actually passing the Independence Referendum Act now in Holyrood and enacting it into Scottish law before the Supreme Court gets to rule on it. It's very hard for the Supreme Court in another country in which you are in a union to interfere with the constitution of the other state because Scotland actually has a constitution and England doesn't. They can't really say we control your Scottish constitution. They cannot say that you've no right to ask your people a question because that question has no influence over the United Kingdom. It simply informs the governments of Scotland and England about how the people of Scotland feel about continuing in that union. And this is why the SNP is pushing this so hard with the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is really on a sticky wicket here. Whatever they do, it's going to be wrong, because if they rule against Scotland holding a referendum, how are they going to stop it? They could say that it is not legal, but not legal in whose law? Because there are two laws in operation in the UK all the time. Scots law and the rest of the United Kingdom's law, which is basically English law. Neither the twain shall meet. Scottish law is guaranteed in all time coming by the Act of Union itself, and therefore the court cannot really say yea or nay to a referendum in Scotland, which does not have any ability to affect the Union. And this is the argument that the SNP is pursuing, that any referendum it's held now uh, does not directly affect the Union in any way, because the, the United Kingdom can say no to it. They can say, well, we don't agree. Um, people of Scotland maybe said they, they don't want to continue with the Union, but we are not going to let you go. Is that a reasonable stance? Well, of course it's not a reasonable stance. Any treaty has two parties, at least. Two countries sign a treaty that provides them with a political union. This is not a geographical territorial union. Scotland didn't cease to exist as a result of the union. It's still there, it's still a nation in a treaty with a separate nation, England. And incidentally, it's not in a treaty with Wales, nor is it in a treaty with Northern Ireland. That came later, those were added by England. So we are still in a treaty with England. 
So imagine for a moment that Scotland had said to England, you can't hold the Brexit referendum because it's illegal in Scots law for you to do that. What do you think they would have said? Well, the question is moot because we know what happened. We got dragged out of the European Union against our will and against our expressed democratic wishes in a referendum in the United Kingdom where we all voted against leaving the European Union and yet here we are outside of it. England believes that because they have the lion's share of MPs that they can always outvote Scotland and that is true. The Scottish Parliament sits in Westminster, the true Scottish Parliament, are the 50 M 59 MPs, I beg your pardon, who are elected here to serve in Westminster and they represent Scotland as our Parliament in that chamber. They're the only ones who can actually say, well, our people have said they don't want this union to continue, so we're out of here and let's start negotiating. The Parliament in Edinburgh does not have such powers. It has limited powers and they are basically pocket money powers um, and basically they give us housekeeping money and they keep all the rest of our taxation. But what is interesting here is that England has illegally annexed Scotland's natural geographical resources. That is not something which was contained in the original Acts of Union. This was just seized illegally and annexed by our next door neighbour without our permission. We maybe got involved in it, we were dragged into it, being promised great wealth and riches for Scotland if we did this, but but look where we are. We have the highest energy bills anywhere in the Western world. No control over our oil and gas revenues. No control over the prices that are charged to ourselves for the energy we receive. No control over the electricity supply in Scotland. No control over the information supply in Scotland. All of this stuff has been put in place to control Scotland and to keep it from leaving the Union. But the one thing that is the missing, I think, and if you read what powers are actually reserved, you will notice this omission. Democracy is not a reserved matter. It's not on the list. Democracy is not there. Democracy in Scotland is not a reserved power. Scotland has the right to democracy. It has full democratic powers as a state. Whether the Parliament uh, is limited by Westminster or not, that Parliament can still be used to make critical decisions uh, about these matters because democracy is universal and democracy cannot be denied by one state against another because that is what Russia is doing to Ukraine. They are annexing territories, forcing people to vote at gunpoint in favour of the annexation and expecting the rest of the world to say that's okay. It's not okay. It's not democracy. It is basically blackmail and it's threats. And this is what we see from London. London has constructed the Union as a trap, as a gilded cage, so that we can't escape. But the fact of the matter is democracy is not a reserved power. As long as we remember that, and as long as the court in, uh, sorry, as long as the Supreme Court uh, judges remember this, they are not in a position legally to deny democracy to Scotland. It's not reserved. It's not reserved to Westminster. Scotland has full democratic rights. It has always had them just the same as every other country on the planet. We always have the right to democracy and therefore this referendum next year will happen regardless of anything that is done, said or legislated by Westminster. They can scream and cry all they like, but they cannot stop democracy. It's not something which has boundaries. It's never had boundaries, and you'll notice it is not in the Scotland Act that England has supremacy over democracy in Scotland. It does not. Westminster has zero power over our democratic rights. And that's an interesting one. You'd think they might have put that in the, um, the Scotland Act, that democracy is reserved. But it's not. Bad mistake there by England, unfortunately. That was a bit of an oversight. So here we are with full democratic powers, and we're worried about using them. We're waiting to hear what the Supreme Court actually says. But you need to remember that it doesn't matter what the Supreme Court says, because no law made in England can deny Scotland democracy. It's not a reserved power. And the annexed territories which have been used to extract oil and gas wealth for the last 50 years will be demanding reparation for that. 
all the billions of pounds worth of our oil and gas which have been illegally sold off from under us from an annexed portion of our own territory which is not part of the British Empire, not part of the British state, they need to be returned to us with interest. So we are sitting here needlessly waiting to hear from a bunch of judges in England about whether they're going to allow us to vote. They can't stop you voting. Nobody can stop you voting. We have full rights to self-determination under the Charter of the United Nations. We have supremacy. We have sovereignty under our own constitution, which is not included in the reserved powers. England only reserved its own constitution, cannot reserve ours. Ours is already written, and it's there in perpetuity. These are the things we all should be aware of, and yet nobody is. And the reason nobody is is because these documents and these facts have been concealed from you for the last 300 odd years. So I'm telling you now, and I can say this with complete confidence, that you will always have the right to vote on anything you want. And that includes whether or not you want this union to continue. I'll see you soon. Bye bye for now.